let me let me let me set this up for you guys because we got we got we got to kick things off. Uh, so we we recorded our regular weekend show on Monday a little late. Come on, you know, be nice. Uh, but that night, yeah, what do I see? I see burning up the timeline. Donald Trump standing in front of a magnificent <laughs> spread of hamburgers, oh, McNuggets, God. French fries. Oh, French fries. No, 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 no French fries. Wait, we there saw, were no French fries? There, we saw, and, there and were and French then, fries. And then literally, okay, first of all, there was that, the still image of him with his arms spread, standing under a portrait of Abraham Lincoln. Yep. And like, it, there was powerful Stanley Kubrick energy. Oh, coming so and much. that's when he became president. Yeah. <laughs> so literally that night, I was like, I almost wanted to be like, we have to do an emergency episode. <laughs> and there was only one man I wanted. And I, I picked up the phone. I said, get me Roth. <laughs> get me David Roth get right us. now. We need... Full saturation. We need David Roth on we, the ham. And his parole officer said, you got it. <laughs> we need the Trump whisperer. The man that the orange talks to. And I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we need full saturation hammed burger, burgers coverage. Hammed burgers. Hammed burgers. Hammed coverage. burgers. And then lo and behold, when I see you on Monday night, David, you had... It's just again like a diamond, like a diamond that was formed in my mind, like from like it was already there, and then I saw it, and like the diamond, like the uh, the third eye opened, and you said one thousand percent at some point in Donald Trump's life before he was president, he had a fantasy about host about filming a fast food commercial in the White House <laughs> with a football team, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like it's. He's he's making all his dreams come true. Except they were they were in full pads. Yeah, so. it would yeah. be they, it would be the eighty five Bears, and they'd be doing the Super Bowl <laughs> shuffle while he was like fantastic, fellas. Yeah. You said uh, that he would be introducing a new burger <laughs> called the Sex Burger, <laughs> <laughs> and I do feel like he was kind of annoyed that he didn't have a new product to roll out there that night, folks. We've got it. It's here. It's amazing. I know sex. I love sex. I've been having sex my whole life. This is the only burger. But yeah, he would, <laughs> as certainly like uh, of all the things that he's done as president that I think he enjoyed, there's like, it's this one, like maybe some of the Easter egg roll things where he like stands next to a mascot and like points at it, like, look, can you believe this guy? <laughs> <laughs> like that one. <laughs> and then uh, the one I mentioned on the dead cast this morning, I think the one that is still for me, like the apotheosis of him living his dream is the first Halloween party that they threw at the White House where he timed his entrance uh, to... They were playing the Ghostbusters theme. I don't even know if I need to mention that. But they, he timed his entrance to Ray Parker Jr. singing Bustin' Makes Me Feel Good. <laughs> like That's when he like kicked through the doors, basically, and strode out. And so like he's never going to top that. But yeah, being surrounded by his football guys, being like, how are the fries, fellas? Terrific. Like That is, I think, but big. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the only other thing he liked was the one he talked about where he's like, I was in the room with all the generals. <laughs> And they were he, so beautiful. The muscles loves, were gigantic. He, he loves like butching up. Yeah, like yeah. he he loves that. Um, but the I have to say though, this is a feel good story because if you were like a stupid college football player, this is like the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. Like if you're like a white outside linebacker, as Dan Quinn was, uh, <laughs> this is the greatest day of your life. There's you're eating one, McDonald's with Donald Trump. And he yes. goes up. He goes up to you and he goes. Oh, look, look at this guy. The cheerleaders better watch out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How many co-eds so, are you getting? This is, like this some is, antiquated This shit. is literally the fantasy your character has in the Call of Cthulhu episodes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Of all, of all, of all the re reactions to it, the, most, the one that rung most hollow was the, were the people who said, oh, that's so sad. These guys, they work so hard. And now they come here and they don't get a nice meal. They fucking loved it. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Have you ever me? met a football player? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the one problem, it's not the concept that I didn't like. I think the bummer came in, and I think this probably would have happened with if they had a real meal. The bummer came in from the unarguable fact that food was ice fucking cold. Dude. Well, how many like security protocols do you think like the filet exactly. of fish had to go through to like yeah. be placed in like an orderly fashion on some platter yeah. that was given from like charles de gaulle to harry truman <laughs> <laughs> they like were then, like, and yeah. we know for a fact that the the single food item that gets cold and inedible fastest is fast food also knowing like fast food french fries fast food burgers 
they go from pretty good to inedible in about five minutes. Also, with the president's predilection for McDonald's being very well known, how many foreign intelligence services have put moles in every single McDonald's <laughs> near the White House? <laughs> that's what they were wanding each like sad pickle like flap. They were like, this could be the one that's plastique. We I don't say, know. The thing that broke me, uh, and it was part of that amazing Kubrickian image of him standing beholding his bounty, was the <laughs> was the silver punch bowl filled with dipping sauce yeah. <laughs> yes. and okay. just little plastic cups of barbecue sauce so two things first of all the the image of him like you know arms open <laughs> looking o- surveying his bounty yeah. like alexander the great <laughs> you know alexander wept because there was no more dipping sauce <laughs> more, for him to no more consume. no more nugs to <laughs> conquer <laughs> yeah, exactly. and no literally the like, world lo- is not enough like, like <laughs> looking at that image i felt like kier doula at the end of 2001 <laughs> after he's gone through the fucking stargate and is just in that weird room by god it's full of fries <laughs> <laughs> but David, like, I swear to God, I, I was taking in this scene and just the image of him under this framed portrait of Abraham Lincoln oh. in the White House with just the fast food spread, grinning like an idiot. I just thought, like, we keep having these, like, these hyper normalized moments. Where, like, I don't think we can get any more, like, past, like, like this is just so perfect. I, like it beggars the imagination. Yeah, it was definitely like awing. Yeah, in yeah its way. it was. It was. Yeah, it was awe inspiring. You know like, what? I, I, yeah, I, I feel like it's like we live in ad busters, or we live in like <laughs> bull, we live in like bull work. Exactly. Yeah. People talk about how oh, you know, people have these weird warped perceptions of the world based on their media consumption. But one of the fundamental realities of growing up in a media saturated world is the knowledge that that the real world doesn't work that way. The the contrast between your criterion existence. And what you see in films is, and television and stuff is so dramatic that no matter how much of it you consume, you know that's not how the world works. And then something like this happens, yep. and you're like, that's so uncanny and unnerving because this, this is a movie. This is a terrible, very oh, heavy-handed 90s satire. Like, like a... And it's like, how is this real? You know what I this think is- it is? I think it's the writers of season three of Donald Trump wanting to start the third season with a bang. It's like uh, one of those weird movies that came out in the late 80s and early 90s that were entirely predicated on a black guy and a white guy trading places and like even <laughs> trading skin. White like Man's Burden, yeah. John Travolta, Harry Belafonte. Yeah, classic. classic film. They're still friends today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know. So the <laughs> message of the movie was true. Uh, but it's like this would be the president in one of those movies. Yeah. But same time, though, I mean, think about how much money he saved going That's with McDonald's yeah. instead of the expense. And, well, and, and he spent, he spent it. Another it was deal. all him buying all it. Of yeah. yeah. He bought those burgs. Now uh, it's a thousand burgers. It was yeah. 200 before, and now he's like, spent $75,000 on you know, burgers. You know, you know what got stuck in my brain was him, Chris pointed it out, is when he goes, be interesting to see how much of this food is left. Yeah, like he, that, that's the le- that's such an old person. So this, sometimes he betrays himself to show how old he is, and that's such an old person thing where it's just like you're so excited you connected synapses for a second, and also to that like you're like, oh my god, the the process of taking one thing from away, what oh oh the 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 process of the <laughs> passing of time. Oh yeah, uh, I wonder if we'll have any leftovers. It's also, I think, part of it is him just being excited to be around like big football yes, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's like, "That's a big fella. I bet he could eat a lot of fillet of fish." We'll see what happens. Have a great time. <laughs> like that is definitely like yeah, a big. A couple of things. Like one, when he said, "Like he's like the Clemson. They're here. They had a wonderful victory against Alabama. All the boys are here. You'll see them." You'll yeah. see them soon. We're going to bring them in. We're going to show you all the big boys. The real boys. Look, we're going to show you all the big boys. Well, look yeah. how tall. He was acting like he was hosting a special where the special is just like, Donald Trump eats dinner with the football <laughs> yeah. team. This and is, but like, but, but to, yeah. his, to his, like, I, I'll, I'll be interested to see how much of this is left. He's also, like you said, he's impressed to be around butch football guys. He's just like looking at him. Like, They're like oh younger versions of the general. Oh boy, yeah. they grow up to be generals. Oh boy, I bet he could eat. I bet he could eat so many hamburgers. <laughs> I bet he could eat so many. Ham- I bet he could eat twice the hamburgers of a normal man. The bit that I had forgotten at the end of that clip because I I stopped when you started abruptly talking about the border yeah. wall, where before he's like every condiment, barbecue sauce, spicy barbecue sauce. Uh, you know, actually, but Nancy's been very rude to me. Like that's where yeah. I stopped the video, and I think I didn't really fully engage with the thing where he'd be like, should I let him out, folks? Do you want me to let him out? You want me to <laughs> you open see the, the door? Boys? Yeah. <laughs> you want to see the boys? He's a showman, folks. Right. But I think his obsession with them eating and their hugeness 
It relates to another classic David Roth tweet because honestly, <laughs> I feel like I'm so terrified. Virgil and I were talking about this. We're so terrified of the hagiography that's going to happen yes. to Trump in the, ne- yeah. in the next generation no, in tw- as things in get tw- worse tw- and stupider. Twenty years, no, twenty years from now, and I'm very much sort of the Nathan Robinson school that Trump will be considered like Reagan for uh, what is the right in this country. Should we have a country in twenty years from now? Yeah. and they will look back on this moment and they will say, you know, when the when the Democrats shut down the government. Donald Trump spent his own money yeah. to pay for these yes. for these big burly football boys. <laughs> and that is why I'm so terrified of all of the official quote unquote political science and journalism that's gonna come and history that's gonna come out of this presidency. All we need are the David Roth tweets. Because well, the one where he's at Mar a Lago in front of the thrice divorced dentist and is just reciting big numbers <laughs> of five billion. That's him. <laughs> It's just like size by itself, unmoored, un, uncontextual. It's what he is excited by. So like a large man, it's like when he sees the big politicians like Luther Strange or Jim Justice. <laughs> yeah. He's a taller than average man, and he can't stop talking about it. I, he's like, look at him. He's huge. And it's like these guys are even bigger than him. Yeah. And it's like, and look how many burgers they eat. It's it's just he just is he's just ensorcelled by just largeness. Largeness. Things that can be graded on a one to ten scale. Yeah. I like when he went to the border and was talking about how hot the border patrol guys were too, where he was like, you think cops are good looking? Oh boy. That's like just, these guys. Like, that's just, that's just <laughs> a very Dan Quinn thing actually is like whenever he meets somebody who isn't like, doesn't look like Stephen Miller, he's like, this yeah. guy could be the biggest movie star ever. Well, that's what he chose to put his life on the he's, line. Like what the fuck? He was like, I want to be the agent of the, of the handsome quarterback. And it's like, could you imagine that's your agent? <laughs> he's just calling up the San Diego Chargers, and he's like, uh, I think uh, Barbara Hershey was from San Diego. And, uh, you Ray know, Kroc, very rude to me. Yeah, I but but uh, I think there was a part of his brain that was like, I got to get all the cameras on this, because when Nancy Pelosi sees that I had dinner with the football guys... Who really won? That's always oh, yeah. been, yeah. really that's been a thing with Trump that's always kind of fascinated me. The way that he like moves at parties because he doesn't really like people very much. He doesn't like touching people or being touched by people very much. Like physically, he's got like the he's on like the Howie Mandel uh, yeah, scale. Yeah, 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 like, exactly. yeah, just, and the vile, just deep misanthropy at the heart of him. But there's something there's like a gloaty aspect to it too, where he's constantly being like, "Did you see the size of the roast? Fantastic!" Like he's always it's it's not just about like size and stuff like that. That like everything is sort of this. It's a display, but like his taste is so fucking stratospherically <laughs> weird that it's impossible to tell like sort of what's going on. Like he's just gonna try to get bigger guys to come to the White House, <laughs> just large, like over large and over dudes. until the like the whatever the government is turned back. These, on. these <laughs> men have a special syndrome that makes them very very <laughs> tall. <laughs> He just gets a bunch of guys with Marf. I'm just imagining <laughs> if like if Robert Wadlow, the the world the uh, the Guinness Book holder record for lo- world's tallest man, he was eight three. Uh, he lived in the early nineteen, early twentieth century. Uh, if they could just get a guy his size to show up at the White House just out of nowhere, he would do whatever he told. Him. Yeah, just like follow Greg Ostertag into the ocean yeah. or whatever. Like, <laughs> because as we've talked about, he just he has no values. He has no sense of connection to any other person. He is a completely hollow person. He has nothing inside of him. So all he can do is judge things by numbers by bigness by large by lar- expensiveness and volume yeah. and volume volume height width and cost it's all he has to determine to weigh things against each other because he has no other metric he because he's a, totally empty he made a very fascinating freud uh oh like god freud study. would have gone nuts uh, on this point two more observations from the the, the hammed burgers <laughs> event <laughs> the, hammed the, the hammed burger up the ultimatum uh okay one he keeps saying, it's all good stuff. It's good American <laughs> stuff. It's American. It's American stuff. And then at one point, the guy, like, someone asked, yells a question at him from, like, you know, the press pool or whatever. It's like, uh, what, what do you prefer? You like McDonald's or Wendy's more? And he goes, they're both great. That was they're Seymour Hersh. That was Seymour Hersh, yeah. actually. <laughs> he's, on, he's on a new, he's on a, he has a hot new scoop. I thought, he's like, Donald, Donald Trump, you know, he'll tell you that uh, he likes all of it because he has to now. You know, the generals have told him he has to support all of them. And, uh, but what 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 he won't tell what they've tried to scrub and I actually got a lot of uh, threatening calls about was he's he's been very anti Wendy's in the past. 
See, that's he's, the he's, coverage. He doesn't like the square burger. He finds it kind of threatening. The edges. Yeah. He doesn't like. He worries he's going to hurt himself. But James, but James, but James Mattis. But James Mattis. Uh, James Mattis on his way out. He. Uh, well, you remember James Mattis actually had a lot of projects in South America with Dave Thomas. <laughs> And he told he told Trump that even out of the White House he wouldn't protect him from the other generals if he came out against uh, Wendy's and Dave Thomas's legacy. So he wouldn't he wouldn't commit to uh, McDonald's or Wendy's, and he just kept saying they're both American. It's, it's good, American it's food. Good American I stuff. Love American we love stuff. American stuff. We love America. Burger King is great. Bur- the Burger King. He said <laughs> earlier in a different thing. He said earlier before they did it. He said we're gonna have McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger Kings. <laughs> and I, I that's just stuck in my head because I think he thinks that is a, those are guys. Yeah. There are multiple Burger Kings. <laughs> they're 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 diff- they're monarchs in small principalities in Europe. And I can't wait to have them all come to the White House. The Burger they're King- amazing leaders. <laughs> the Burger Kings, I think they're just all wonderful, <laughs> wonderful fellows. And you would hope you would hope that there could be one king. He thinks that, that they could figure something out. He thinks that Peter King is like the son of the Burger King, so he's always really nice to him. The Burger like King's parents, of how are they doing? Are hilarious. <laughs> I find them. Um, I just I laugh uh, so hard. And the last thing that the, the detail that, that you have to clock in this video that's incredible, uh, Felix, you reminded me of it. Uh, He's just given up wearing suit jackets now because he's so fucking fat. Like he's wearing he put, his he's overcoat. Yeah. He's, he's wearing his overcoat inside, like surveying, uh, like next to the heat lamps, next to next to his bur- birder bounty. I love he's wearing a big overcoat. I love, like I love, I love, I love wearing it, like, like it's a bath. I love wearing four layers in the room filled with heat lamps. So like, <laughs> room temperature fries and ask a confused nineteen-year-old if he's bagging coeds. <laughs> As he just stares at me, I'm just standing like a minotaur in my giant coat because no one can know I gained 40 pounds since Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, so awesome, dude. Because his his uh, his physical's coming up, and we, as I all know, last time uh, that guy Ronnie Jackson came out and said he's fit as a fiddle and one pound under obese. <laughs> And then he was rewarded with a nomination for Surgeon General. And then it came out that he was just writing scripts to everybody and driving his car into trees. I would pay a number in the hundreds of dollars. And I'm not a wealthy man, but I would pay that much to get the actual data of Trump's physical. Because I feel like his normal body temperature is either like 72 (laughs) degrees or like 131 (laughs) degrees. They're like, everything is piping hot or just frozen. Many many have said that, uh, you know, a lot of people have very fast blood. It's not good. It's not good because it doesn't stay in one place long enough to do the healing things blood does. My blood, it sticks around. <laughs> <laughs> I, but what I'm just, it's like, who are they going to have to get to sign off on saying that he's a healthy individual? It's Dr. Oz. I mean, he's gonna, it's going to be like a three part yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like, to t- okay, guys, uh, I did the physical and I'm doing great. And to tell you that, here's the guy who killed Kanye West's mom. <laughs> <laughs> there should, like, if Trump. I want like Trump to be able to direct his own programming for the physical because it would be like him going out onto a TV stage in his like full suit and overcoat and picking up a foam triangular weight that says a hundred pounds <laughs> and putting it over while his while wearing head. while wearing the old old timey wrestling over, singlet over his suit. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, why is this a public thing? This isn't in the fucking, started. This isn't the fucking Constitution. Eisenhower started it. Yeah, yeah, but was, is this a fucking formal? He like a uh, president. Presidential candidates release their tax returns too. No, no, it is it. a norm thing, but it's it's unlike the tax returns, which could hurt him because they're an objective thing he doesn't have control over. This is a thing that he could use to brag about how incredibly healthy he is. Like, for example, so he it doesn't doctor, matter. Doctor, so it's all for show. You it just is get for a, show. You just he get took, a doctor feel good. To yes, just but say like whatever. we said, the guy he got. He uh, fucking, uh, President Trump is uh, six foot nine, and uh, I watched him do five slam dunks in a row. That's, the, like, that's I, what I'm looking forward to about it. Is that they're like he parallel parked a golf cart? That's part of the physical. <laughs> like, like, no, like I mean, that was what was so funny about it last time. For one thing, he was one pound under the BMI for being obese, which is hilarious. And they had him take a cognitive test that he passed, the highest score. And it's like a 10-point scale to determine if you're concussed (laughs) or if you have active dementia. And they're asking you questions like, what year is it? And he passed. And he was bragging about it. So that's what it is. It's a chance for him to remind everybody that he is not just a rapidly decaying ball of suet. The doctor said I actually grew two inches this year. (laughs) I'm still growing. It's But I'm hoping that the measurements will be different. It'll be like some NFL combine thing where they'll be like, like, he ran a 4-3-40. Look, the numbers don't lie. (laughs) Uh, My favorite thing about him just talking about how it's all American. It's American food. It's great. We love it. One, just as the nerdy fact checker in me will will be forced to say, uh, Burger King at least 
they did, they bought Tim Hortons and then did a corporate inversion to go to Canada to avoid taxes. So uh, actually, they're not American anymore. <laughs> New uh, guest on the Crassen cast, <laughs> Matt Chrisman, <laughs> fact checking uh, Donald Trump's burger. Party. Also, there's nothing American about monarchy. We fought a revolution to to overthrow the Burger King. That, that's a boom. Uh, now I want to. And I wanna, secondly, it's it goes back to what Felix said about how it feels like an Adbusters cover, and also what we've said earlier about his. Uh, sort of weirdly uh, MLM, you know, like third worldist uh, hostility toward American institutions and his seeming desire to destroy them is he just li- just goes in front of America and says, America is defined by these disgusting hunks of beef slurry and and th- like this gross shit. And we're saying this is what this is what we're fighting for. This is what we're putting a wall up for is the grossest food you can eat. Protecting that from, like, carnitas. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. You know, bold. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, this is, like, the the, the, the cheapest... Like, the, this is the shortest move to, uh, you know, gold in the Trump era. But you remember, you know, when Obama first got in and he sent back the bust of Winston Churchill and people are yep. still oh, mad that's, about that? They're so mad about that. And, like, literally, like, like yeah, like, the, the resolute desk is, like... We're, put we're his so, feet up. He put his feet up on it. Yeah. He put his disgusting feet on Dude, the fucking resolute desk. Uh, Obama, you know Obama, just... Obama ashed his hookah pipe on the resolute desk. <laughs> Obama he put his all over Ob- it. Obama t- took his shoes off and put his big stinky feet on the desk, <laughs> and I just l- think about it all the time. I would, I would be proud to link the betrayer stench <laughs> off the desk. <laughs> this guy, I mean, he like he could have literally just filled the drawers with ketchup and be like, "Open the drawer, dip a nugget in." <laughs> <laughs> each, each drawer has a different sauce. George <laughs> Washington <laughs> was so smart that he knew. Before there was even sauce packets, he knew people <laughs> so, would want to use them to dip. So there are dipping. So, so, so when, when when Trump is speaking saying this, or when when he like uh, mistypes hamburger as was a hamburger, hamburger. <laughs> uh, I actually have come around to the QAnon theory that these misspellings are totally intentional. It's just that he's not signaling uh, the the beginning of the, the uh, storm. Sp- yeah the special ops to uh, arrest. Hillary and Obama and everything. He's just playing some kind of weird game that's only funny to him, like a like a four year old might do a joke. Yeah, the way that the Zodiac killer would miss sell motorcycle <laughs> in his letters. But like speaking of like the sort of the reaction to the the the, the hammed burger spectacle, right? Yeah. I just want to talk about uh someone did check in on this and I would like to share it now. Old friend of the show and someone who is also not unfamiliar with having I don't know, a sort of Orson Welles style <laughs> uh, appetites and physique. A gourmand. If a you gourmand, will. if you will. I'm talking, of course, about the swirl of a cape. Yeah. <laughs> the Paul Prudhomme. So, I'm talking about. Somebody put that uh, organ uh, blast in there. <laughs> I'm talking about Kevin D. Williamson, yeah. a.k.a. Uh, Fat Dracula. Kevin Heavy D. Williamson. <laughs> <laughs> We just need to clock how absolutely full of shit this guy is, because uh, here's his response to this. He says, on Monday, President Trump welcomed the Clemson Tigers, this year's college football champions, to the White House. With the government partially shut down, the usual White House hospitality was not on the table. And so the Trump team improved in a very Trump way with a buffet of fast food from McDonald's, Burger King and Domino's. The most normal thing about Donald J. Trump, <laughs> the most American thing is probably his taste for fast food. The man likes his KFC. This scandalizes the sort of people who today belong to what in some quarters is still known as the Democratic Farmer Labor Party. I don't don't get that. Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, okay. Rebecca Jennings, writing in Vox, sniffed that it was a strange choice, particularly for an event held in the 140-seat state dining room. Perhaps Bresco was all booked up. The usual progressive complaints were made. The fast food was disrespectful, classist, and heavens, racist. Jennings quotes a Trump critic arguing that a Big Mac served on a silver platter is probably the best metaphor for Trump's presidency I can think of. Somebody should tell him about that golden toilet up the street from Trump's place at the Guggenheim. The Clemson quarterback, for his part, judged the spread awesome. And what I love about this is what, 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 uh, what Stone, uh, Cold Stone Steve Austin <laughs> Is uh, is doing with this is like he's like oh they're turning up their nose at the the most Hardy, normal thing yeah. about Donald Trump is that he eats fast food every day wholesome food but like Kevin D Williamson is also perhaps best known for literally saying that like yeah. our white underclass who eats fast food every day should. Kill should themselves yeah. with a needle. Their fentanyl. feet should fall off from uh, diabetes. They should overdose from fent. They should just be bulldozed into open graves. Again, Carlo of Nosgard says people do not remember their own lives. 
Wow. Oh yeah, I can't wait for more of these nuggets. <laughs> oh, there are a lot of them. As you read that fucking. You want to hear about? Do you want to hear about Carl's New Year's Eve? I don't. No, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, there was a big plot with him trying to secure beer. Oh, but yeah, like now it's the back and forth over like if you're making fun of this, like th- this is again, if you make fun of anything Donald Trump does or any of the just absurd, idiotic spectacle of him being president and like just really revealing to the world what America truly is. Exactly. Because like that, that quote from that, uh, that lib who says, oh, Mac, Big Mac on a silver planner, that's the defining image of the. That defines the Trump person. No, Damn, that's dude, America. So, yeah, that no. is America. It's not just Trump. It is everything that was always here. He's just revealing it in the most heavy-handed, mid-90s I, satire but, way and, possible. And, and, you know, Matt and I were talking before a recording, and, I, you know, I've, I've always been flummoxed by the whole, you know, all right-wing obsession with uh, culture in terms of Steve King and all this stuff about how well, we're going to bring people. Uh, we can't. We have to close the borders because if we bring people over here, they're going to have cultures that are going to add mix with our culture and fuck it up or whatever. And uh, I mean, the the two obvious counterpoints are uh, one, uh, capitalism subsumes everything. So, you know, you could be from the most regressive culture and come to America and within one generation, you're just another uh, uh, fucking psychotic who's, you know, trying to move up the corporate <laughs> ladder. And two, um, what culture are you trying to defend this? Is this the apex of American culture? Well, this is I think this points forward to what Matt was talking about, too, in terms of how this is going to be. Because he's going to get taken seriously like any other president and written about like every other president. And this is going to be what it is. This is going to be he's the everyman president, the guy that served McDonald's to the football boys in the White House. And that's yeah, like big boys, which is, you know, again, the way that like Reagan still gets talked about as being like this guy that understood yeah. some innate yes. thing when really it was just that like everything in his head was falling away except for like inspirational speeches that he'd given in movies about like driving safely. <laughs> or whatever from like you know, just, for the Gipper. Yeah, but this is there's something about the the idea also of like at this moment of defending this idea of a culture that it is also at the moment of like peak abasement yeah. of itself. That like there's yeah. a video we, uh, that is not the one that we watched that a coworker sent me. Um, it was from outside the White House. It was one of those like Trumpy scrums where for once there wasn't a helicopter like ten feet <laughs> away. Screaming just, at just, yeah, right. So in this case, he's he's saying the same things he said inside there where he's like, you know, ton of burgers, like they're pouring in more and more, whatever. And then as he leaves, the reporters are yelling questions at him and one person is like, should Steve King resign? Should Steve King resign, sir? And then like oh, that person gets shouted down, not by Trump, but by the other reporters being like, do you have honey mustard, sir? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you have so how much? Sauce, sir? Do you yeah. have epic Szechuan sauce? <laughs> And that video is like, cause you're right that like that's a, a strong Kubrick vibe. The interiors because it's very ornate, it's very well lit. Yes, kind of, yeah. yeah. Whereas the one outside looks like fucking Inland Empire. Like it's like <laughs> weird late Lynch. Like the audio's not synced. It's like super bright spotlight on him, and he's all clammy and like just whatever. It that one is. I'll share it. So yeah. you can I mean, put it, it on is, this if you want. It but. is like perfect though because for the people that want to feel. Their only desire is for everything to feel normal again, and they want Trump out of there. The one of the key features of everything feeling normal again will be in a decade or possibly less, we will fondly remember the things Trump did. No one's going to remember the shutdown. Very few people will remember the dot will remember DACA or any of the border violence or anything like that. It will just be like, oh, you know, I didn't agree with it, but he was fun. Sometime. They continue yeah. travel ban. Yeah, yeah. Which and, is, and, and you know what? Give majority credit. Muslim he, countries. He secured a, ex, the he secured the existence of our people and a future for purple grimaces. <laughs> yeah, I mean when when, 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 no, when, Keem, when Keemstar is president and the State <laughs> of the Union is that video, it just Lil Zan comes over and they just sit around and talk <laughs> and they're like. Yeah, this shit is just so not. By made. the way, this is that's, a, that's what it's going to be. This is a fucking publicity stunt in the middle of the longest government shutdown in history, where uh, the fucking TSA workers who are already fucking underpaid and don't really have a lot to do are calling in sick, where airports are uh, steadily shutting down right now, and where people are just being able to get shit through fucking uh, airport security, guns, whatever the fuck you want, drugs. Go nuts. If you want to fucking bribe a TSA agent right now, here's the time to fucking do it. I mean, I don't don't even have a flight coming up. I'd just like to do that. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. I might try to just like move some weight. Just (laughs) Just for fun. (laughs) But just back to back to Kevin D. Williamson and how utterly full of shit he is. Because like, first of all, he has the same body type as Trump. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. Big hot, wide perfect. boy. Big wide boy. That's another guy who might swap out a suit jacket for an overcoat just for oh, like yeah, a sassy look. Yeah, he just he wears capes just because it's like form fitting. <laughs> but like, okay, he's saying like, this is actually the most normal thing about Donald Trump, his love of fast food. And it's like in any other context, in any of other of his essays that yep. people have lauded him for to be like, hey, you know, you may not agree with the guy, but man, oh man, can he write? The amount of like contempt and just visceral hatred he has for any person who would eat fast food yeah. every day he would say is so apparent he would say if, if if anyone uh had some sob story about losing a job or having an addiction or having diabetes uh, or, 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 or diabetes or or struggling to make a payment he'd say and yet you have money every day to stuff your face with this horrible food that doesn't even nourish you and makes you sick and you're too stupid not to do it that's what he would say to anybody who uh who didn't have uh Trump's just golden underwear to protect him from any consequences for his actions. I think the difference is if you have enough money to buy whatever food you want, but you choose to do this, then Kevin Williamson's like terrific. That's the and that, he zigs where they zag. It's that Burkean thing where where anything that rich people do by virtue of the fact that they have so many resources is some sort of art project. And so this rich guy just eating garbage is is almost a postmodern commentary and therefore to be impressive as yeah, well, that's to some like, disgusting slug just stuffing his face. That's the challenge with, with Trump in general. The idea of it being like, if you criticize it as being like, well, this is just really fucking dumb as hell and he's an oaf, then you're not only are you like part of the reason why he won and all exactly, the other sort of yeah. troll shit that they throw back, it's also like, if you just continue to assess this as exactly what it appears to be, which is all it is, because Trump himself is not a master of anything except for like walking around with toilet paper stuck to his shoe or whatever. <laughs> like he's not deft, you know, but this is it, to keep writing about it as what it is, which is just like this big weirdo fucking up and being strange. Then like that is one note. It's a challenge in writing about him, but certainly it's not something that Williamson can't even admit of that. Well, I mean like to what Williams are just- what Williamson is responding to, like the Vox thing, where like, you know, a Big Mac on a silver tray, like I think that's a metaphor for Donald Trump's America. Again, as you said, Matt, that there's no metaphor no. there. Like the, the, like a metaphor replies like implies like it like it's standing in for something right. else or there's a degree of remove. It's like, no, that like there, there is no No. Like that's just it. Yeah, like, metaphor is no, dead. First of all, it's, cl- it's closer to a simile. <laughs> nice. <laughs> These guys are reading now. Yeah, it's yeah. right on point. All right. So Donald Trump is like having an argument with your father over serving fish spread for dinner. <laughs> and he's always been frigid since that summer. He says there is a big change coming. <laughs> and his professorly manner, uh, even his dress has changed since the summer of 1979 <laughs> when you went to Canute. <laughs> to on a canoeing trip with your older brother who's been speaking to you more. Is this still book one? Yep. How much more of your life dude, are you ready to... Thousands of pages. <laughs> I think I kind of prefer the SoundCloud rappers. <laughs> Ooh, guess what, bitch? It's all 80s coming of age in Norway. Oh, and then we God. got his young professional life. And then we got his career as a novelist. Then we got him raising kids. <laughs> Suck my dick, pussy. We're literary now. I took your advice. I'm reading books. I'm reading a book of your book than you have ever read in your entire life. <laughs> no, I think... I, I, no, this is all about the shutdown. And I, I, I would like to want to talk about that for yeah. a second. Because I think it's really fascinating right now how... So a large number of TSA agents are calling it sick uh, solely so they can work in their gig economy jobs because the TSA, as we know, it's security theater. It's all made up and it's basically a gigantic make work program at this point, which doesn't make a sense, a lot of sense right now when the labor market is uh, so tight where these people actually don't have to go to their shitty make work job, especially if they're not getting a check from it. And I know, and I, I, I didn't get a chance to read it. Maybe one of you gentlemen got a chance to read it. But uh, there was an article today saying uh, the TSA should just go on strike right now, which, as far as I understand it, is legal for them to do. But fuck it. They have all the cards right now. They could unilaterally shut down the entire transportation network in the country. And there is absolutely no way that Trump could do what Reagan did and fire them all because who the fuck would replace them for literally no money? <laughs> the football players. <laughs> yeah. They do and they, they don't literally just That is true them. because the football players also work for no That's money. That's what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. If there's one thing we know about Clemson is that they're willing to put themselves in harm's way for like <laughs> zero money. <laughs> I mean, and, like, some he's weird always, self congratulatory so, so, guy on top so of He's so smart. He gave them the hamburgers so they would work at the airport. He already sweetened the pot with yep. them. That's an art of the deal too. Okay, but even <laughs> All right, let's say let's say the the football players can't do it because the NCAA CAA won't let him. Like, uh, even if you're not getting paid. Oh, yeah. The NCAA's job. rules. But if you're the Nazis. Trump just said, folks, we need volunteer patriots to do security at the airport so that we can keep 
keeping the planes and also do the wall. You're telling me that retired dipshits would yeah. not well, get, get on their okay. fucking okay, hover routes and, wait, wait, and at just every, go every, to every, every airport and be like, sir, point. I am volunteering. Wait, wait, Manning, every fucking checkpoint is an 80-year-old Dwight Shrew with a fucking oxygen tank strapped yes. to him. That's going to stop me from bringing a knife on an airplane. Nothing does anyway. The, the yeah. high school dropouts doing it now aren't stopping you from anything. Like you said, it's security theater. It doesn't matter. Just put it. But just put Herkimer, well, it's, Herkimer it's, Smithers in a fucking uh, TSA outfit. Wait, wait, wait. Well, it's still it, uh, ca- well, it's just not that it doesn't stop everyone. It's just that it's still casting. It's random. If you want to do a terrorist attack, there's like a 50-50 shot. You'll actually be able wait, to do it. That's so, true now, though, oh, or okay. even before. I'm I saying be, that the odds are better now. So. Dude, the, fuck, the fucking boomer mercenaries, not even mercenaries, just soldiers of true belief who aren't getting paid. Oh my God! Searching every woman's feet. <laughs> you know they don't have guns. They don't have any authority no, they whatsoever. Have you can leave. A okay, TSA you know, checkpoint. To to your point, and I know, and I know you saw this. The idea, if you put out the call, like we need you, we need you to work the TSA for no money. By the way, I will volunteer. Did you see? <laughs> I know you saw it. This immediately made me think of uh, the tweet this week of that person who's just like. I would eat gruel and dirt for the yeah. president. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, I, would, I would drink his piss. We love him so much, and what he's doing for this country is so good. Uh, someone, Anything no, no, for no, him. So, someone was like, oh, Donald Trump made these fucking college kids eat shitty fast food, and this guy said, I would eat fucking grime. I would eat <laughs> dirt. I would let the president piss in my well, mouth. It really, you know, to go back to Obama, <laughs> and, to, and to PUA, as it always goes back to, n- nice guys do finish last, though, right? Because all Obama did was reach out to these fucking hogs and yeah. be like, uh, you have some legitimate concerns. I mean, um, yeah. I, I can see why you think that I'm Muslim. And they were just like, fuck you! We hate, you're trying to put broccoli in my kids' lunch, you fucking piece of shit. And then this guy who's just like, uh, sorry, you can't go on a flight this week. <laughs> like, he just doesn't give a shit about them. Every rally, he just talks about whatever he wants to talk about. Just doesn't pay attention. Complete open contempt for them. I would Could literally you... eat poop with you, sir. <laughs> no, it would be my honor to watch you grin at me as I knelt before you <laughs> and just sucked on a turd like a Tootsie Pop. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here is, honor. here is the ultimate proof that there's no massive fucking terrorist network that's in cahoots with MS-13 or whatever the fuck the insane suburban right-wing mindset believes is befalling this country is that if there were any sort of competent terrorist network targeting us, uh, they would use this opportunity to go in and hijack a bunch of fucking airliners. The Coast Guard is also not getting paid right now. Hell yeah, get those fucking uh, bails, buddy. That, those are non-essential that troops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, cigarettes boats is going. Come on. Why Andy, are we in Miami podcasting? Vice. We could be doing crimes right now. Miami so Vice. many coastal crimes. I have to and say. every littoral area in the country <laughs> is unguarded. Uh, oh, dude, we could take Maine like right now. Uh, I have to say, uh, Felix's idea of these little hoglets just loving the poop gives me an idea of a remake of Sallow where the fascists are shitting all over the slaves, but they're loving it. Ooh, and they're I'm just sorry. They're slapping their little hands together. Did you guys see there was a congressman named Rodney something, some fucking chud dipshit? Freulinger? No, a different He's- one. Uh, he was going to the, the White House for some bullshit for the shutdown or whatever. The day after the hoot nanny we talking about, and he said, uh, going to go see the president today. Uh, I hope I can get some of those leftovers from yesterday. Oh, yeah. I would like, love, it would be my honor <laughs> to have him taunt me while I eat cold fries. Sir, I would love nothing more than to eat a fucking frozen filet of fish hockey puck. That would make me feel honored. You like it, don't you? you? Tell sir. me you like it. That's terrific. Just oh, oh I, and he, I would could see Donald Trump making them take a picture of, of the rep eating the cold hamburger while Donald Trump just does his stupid yeah. double thumbs up. And he's like, he loves it. He doesn't care that it's cold. I don't even think <laughs> it's better that way. These congressmen like are great eaters. Oh, tell, they can really put it away. Tell me how much you love it, Rodney. Aren't you happy? I think he came to me just to eat the hamburgers. <laughs> I will say that I felt so Matt and I have talked about this in the past. This because for a lot of like the kind of hacko jokes that we made about Trump in like 2014 and 15 have long since come to pass as actual news. I mean, oh, yeah. this is like just sort of the way that we, we live our lives now is waiting to see which shitty drunk jape is going to become like an actual national issue. Yeah. 
I felt it when you all were talking about the idea of these like septuagenarian guys that like photograph themselves in body armor every time there's like a mass shooting where they're like, I stand ready to be called up to like go to the mall. Yeah. <laughs> like those guys. <laughs> that, like, I really can like see a future where those dudes are are like they, I mean, they wouldn't really want to be TSA because they like they really enjoy watching their stories that's, during the day. It's and also everything. a shitty job. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible, that, shitty that's job. more of an urban style job. Right. And they don't get <laughs> guns, which is a big problem. Yeah. But they, yeah, but they would. I, mean, I guess that's like you're right that they would not want to. They would want to be standing. They wouldn't want to be indoors. But if there was something where they could like ride around in the desert with like a gun turret on top of their car, completely unmolested, and maybe paid by the state, like I don't have a hard time imagining. Well, that like being a hunter in Oregon Trail. Yeah, I mean, sort of, but like you're, I you're cut much angry because I can't remember how to say Oregon. <laughs> I would like to mention, though, obviously these are these are the the, the, the president's fans of our president, you know, who Hawks. Would, would love to volunteer you, us, yeah, yeah, All who would us. love to volunteer <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. us and our listeners. We love his, him. to eat his leftover food, to eat gruel. Um, you Roll know, around just, like a little to, little hoglet in a septic tank, just sort of like <laughs> maybe like I, I was I was thinking about this about the other day. Like I, I was thinking like I would just like to. Just sort of like gently kiss his neck, or just sort of nibble <laughs> a little bit, like the, like you know, like uh, when you put your uh, feet in those foot baths filled with like all those fish that just eat the dead skin <laughs> uh-huh. off your feet. I think I'd like to do that. Wait, is that uh-huh. a thing you can but do? But for his yeah. face, yeah, it would be my oh, honor I've never to done exfoliate that. you, yeah. sir. Yeah. Can you imagine your cheek rubbing it up against Donald oh, Trump's no. cheek? Come on, guys. And there's yeah. this. There's this Don't. oily liquid on no, you, but it's not stop warm. It. No. It's a little bit below room <laughs> temperature. Stop, stop. They say I have one of the best substances on my skin. <laughs> yeah. So it, protects my... it, it protects me of uh, predators taking a hold of me. <laughs> my <laughs> personal least favorite genre of Felix's tweets are the ones where he's like, we love to feel the president's warm thighs like on our shoulders. We love it. <laughs> we like, love that shit is just like, we love, they haunt me. <laughs> like, we, love, like, we, oh. we love when we're sitting knee to knee with Donald Trump across <laughs> from us, and we just feel his... Room temperature belly seep on our knees. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I mean, I am obviously like all of us uh, have spent an unhealthy amount of time thinking about this man, which is just awful yeah. to think of that this just this never getting this, that shit just, back at all. This this non entity in any meaningful sense. This hollow shell of humanity. This 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 barely human homunculus that I've spent this much time thinking about his empty brain and what's in it. The one thing I d- try not to think about. Because my my brain just as a self defense mechanism won't go there is really trying to consider his physical person because it just starts to make me feel a deep nausea and dread that's beyond almost existential like, like a really Lovecrafty like the idea of what his body smells like I would like to take what f- he what he feels like the textures. <laughs> I would like to take a fine tooth oh, comb God. and just like run it down his back. <laughs> oh, no, someone who again is fundamentally an irrelevant figure oh. uh, in no, terms but, of the political say, development right, of, of this country. He's just, a, he's just this piece of tur- this dog turd that <laughs> rushed ashore on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a wave that he had nothing to do with. But his personal body is just revolting on a visceral level. To it's me. cool. His floor in, in the 2020 is like 45%. Yeah. It would, yeah. No it would, question he gets would, lower than that. It mm-hmm. would like to like live in Donald Trump's body. It would be like piloting a mech made out of cow carcasses. 